Okay, so this one works. Now I just gotta tell everybody that I'm over here. That's cool. All right, we'll figure it out. Now I just gotta do that. I guess I'll have to like wait for people to show up over here. Okay, hello, Rachel. I'm glad that <laughs> somebody showed up. So I had to pretty much cancel the whole thing and create a new one. So hopefully everyone will transfer themselves this way and it won't be like a whole thing. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thanks, Leah. You're gorgeous. All right, um, let's see. Hopefully everybody will be able to jump over from where they were. <laughs> I figured it out at least. Um, let me message them and make sure that they know that it's fixed and then we will get started with the questions. I have all my questions in a cute little mug. I got my moonshine over here. I don't know how that's going to go. I'm really nervous. It's been a long time since I've tried moonshine. <laughs> so hopefully it won't be just like the worst thing ever. But we'll see. Let's see. Let me message Sarah. No, not Sarah. Leah. Sarah's at work. Leah. Leah, Leah, Leah. Okay. Um, so how are y'all doing today in the meantime? <laughs> are y'all doing good? Let's see. Leah. And. Okay. Just let them know I'm over here. A new one and it's live. Okay. So I think we should be good to start. Let me just open this thing and make sure I'm good and I can see everybody's comments and everything. Cool. Um, so what I'm going to be doing for this whole video is I have a mug of like, oh, thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Um, I have a mug of all the questions I was sent on Twitter. And this mug actually I got from Grace Marie um, during the Big Buddy read along of the, oh my gosh, Strange the Dreamer. Um, I won one of like the contest things and so I got this this gorgeous mug and it's so pretty and I actually did an unboxing video but then I never posted it because I'm a terrible human um but yeah so there that's that um it's a really pretty little mug so I'll be using this for the questions um thanks Cindy thank you very much I I'm very self-conscious about it um but I I did want to kind of give a shout out to Grace Marie for that um also the happy booktuber I want to thank her also because I got a um uh, a gift card to Amazon during the the Big Buddy read along also. And thank you so much, Cindy. You make me so happy. Um, I also got this really pretty bookmark that I kind of hid back here. But um I got this I got this bookmark and one other bookmark from um, Justin at Triumphal Reads recently. And I didn't um, share all those things and I won random contests and stuff. So I wanted to share all those at once. So um let's get into the questions and here's the moonshine things that I'm gonna be trying out today. There's a bunch of different flavors. I won this at something. I've been winning a lot of random contests. I don't know what's up with that. Um, lately, so I actually won these. And it's like five different flavors. We have the original blackberry, apple pie, vanilla bean, and peach. So, don't know how this is going to go. Um, I've had moonshine, I think, twice. I've had it twice. So, I had apple pie moonshine at a party. And I had, like, I don't know what flavor moonshine at, um, another party. I don't know. One was a Christmas party. One was a Halloween party. Um, I don't even know how to open these things. They're like little tiny little mason jars, but they have like a stickery thing on them. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, yeah. <laughs> but first, before I get started, I do want to thank everybody that subscribed to me. And I want to thank everyone for being here because I, I just, I'm so excited that I actually am part of this community and that I've made so many friends in this community and all that good stuff. And I just dropped all the moonshine, so hopefully nothing broke. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and try the first one. Just the, oh, wait, that's not original. The original one just to get, like, a flavor <laughs> before I go to the first questions. Oh, boy. I don't even know. Oh, it doesn't smell bad. It just smells like liquor. <laughs> it just tastes like liquor, too. I love that. It's very strong. Okay. I just, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe that taste. Just tastes like pure alcohol. And that was the original, and that's all it really is. Um, unaged corn. Yay. Okay. These are all from the Old Forge Distillery in um, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So, 
there's that. And happy booktuber. I just gave you a little shout out for my Amazon gift card and I wanted to thank you for it. Um, so let's go ahead and get into my questions in my mug here. These are the honest reviews I subbed for. <laughs> yes, it tastes like pure rubbing alcohol. You could use this to clean a wound. Um, so let's just take this from here. Oh gosh. Also before <laughs> if my face starts getting really red, it's cause I'm kind of allergic to alcohol. I drink it anyway. It just itches a lot and my face gets really blotchy and red. So don't even know why I tried on the makeup when I know what's coming. Okay. So um, my first question is from Flynn, um, from Flynn Bantow. I think is how you pronounce it, Bantow. Um, and I love their videos. They have a cute little um, ukulele video and I love that. They it's like a live and they just played the ukulele randomly throughout it and it was great. Um, and they asked, what's my favorite Christmas movie? Um, I have a couple. Okay. That's, that doesn't answer the question, though, if I say that. Okay, so my favorite Christmas movie is The Old Christmas Carol um, with Disney. <laughs> it's like a Disney-themed Christmas Carol where Goofy was Jacob Marley and, like, Pete was the ghost of Christmas whatever, and it was really creepy. Um, but I did really love that Christmas movie. Um, but, I, I, but besides that one, I'm going to just go with Elf because I've probably watched that one the most times. I own Elf. I love Elf. I can quote all of Elf, and I love the soundtrack. It's great. Um, my favorite character in it is the mom because she's just so supportive of the entire situation. And if you've seen some of my, like my trope video or anything like that, you know that I kind of went through a similar situation of buddy in the elf movie. Um, I discovered my biological father when I was, uh, 24, I got the test done and we met and everything. So we do have that, um, in common. That's why I really love elf. No one, it's, it's weird to like relate so deeply to elf, but yes, I do. Um, and that, so that was that, um, a character I identify most with in it would definitely be Buddy the Elf. I love him. And the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. <sighs> oh, my gosh. I thought you said vagina party, not moonshine party. Oh, my. That's a whole different kind of live show. <laughs> We're not going to have one of those today. Um, and my least favorite character, honestly, is kind of Santa Claus. Because he was kind of grumpy in that movie. Anyway, we'll just put that down. All right. So, next question. <laughs> oh, no. Next question is, I'm two times speed to catch up. Oh, okay. That makes sense, then. You don't even need two times speed because I, I talk so fast and mumble that, you know. I warp the time space continuum. Okay. The next one is from Rachel. Rachel Marie, I don't know if you were still here. You were a minute ago. Um, but Rachel, uh, let's see. I think this is from that way. No, it's actually from a different Rachel. I'm sorry. It's from a different Rachel. I just read Rachel because I wrote the name. This is Rachel from Booktree. Um, and they asked, if you could hang out with any author for a day, who would it be and what would you want to do with them? Um, sorry, Rachel. This Rachel's really cool too. Um, and they, they, ah, that's really hard. Cause with authors, it's like either you really like their work or you really like them as a human or both. Mm, I would want to hang out with Neil Gaiman for a day and like, I don't know, do something stupid, like graffiti somewhere that's legal to graffiti or, or like, I don't know, prank call people with Neil Gaiman. I don't know. Something like that. Yes. I voted you the queen in the poll, Cindy. Cindy won a queen. All your answers are correct. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um. Let's see. Yes. Next. I'd also want to play chess with Neil Gaiman because he just seems like someone who would know how to play chess. Um, I don't know. Okay. Next one is Kayla from The Pursuit of Tales. Um, they've been doing a lot of videos recently about their, like, thesis, and which I find really interesting because I think it was on World War. Oh, no. I think it was one. But now I can't remember because I'm tired. But they've been doing a lot of um, videos about their thesis and their research for their thesis. And I really love hearing about people's research because I'm a total nerd. Um, oh, my gosh. I also remember Kayla because when I did my coin toss video during Booktubeathon, she, like, tossed hers four times. And one of them ended up on, like, top of her shelf somehow. She was funny. Okay. Um, her, she has a bookish question and then a non-bookish question. The bookish question are, what are some of your favorite tropes? My favorite tropes are definitely the enemies to lovers trope. I just love it. I'm total trash for that. Um, the whole, like, 
not knowing who your family is trope personally it's just you know i just love that um and someone having powers and, and learning that they have powers or learning that they're a part of some like different species all that good stuff i love that um i also love characters that have like a duality complex um, um that's my jam all right my face is already getting red and splotchy you can tell okay my non-bookish question is what is one moment in your day that you're willing to share where you found yourself smiling um small big any moment um, let's see. I think that my, the part of the day where I find myself smiling a lot is during my groups with my patients. When I, when someone has like a breakthrough or someone, you know, admits something that they weren't willing to admit before or they make progress that I, that they hadn't made before. Um, I love seeing that because it definitely gives you hope because some of the, a lot of the patients I have are just such strong people. They've been through so much stuff and they've somehow, you know, survived, survived up to that point. And so, I really loved that. And then, okay. Yes, and that was you. <laughs> I'm so glad you made it. I was talking about your, your coin tosses that I put in my booktubeathon video. <laughs> um, and then, let's see. Who asked? I think Cindy asked, what examples of duality complex do you have? Um, let's see. I had one. A lot of them are things that I've written. Um, one is in Star in a Star Wars book I've read. There is a, like, Sith apprentice called Darth Xana and she has like her before and after sort of duality complex you know she's got this like very you know emotionally charged all over the place energy and then she's got the really evil controlled sort of personality um and then a lot of my duality complex characters are people that are more in like movies and stuff but also in comics like Wanda Maximoff I I kind of you know, she doesn't really, you don't really think of her as having a duality complex, but like she's got this very like calm exterior in the movies and very chaotic powers, I guess. Um, and then in Heroes, Nikki and Jessica, she had sort of a dissociative identity disorder and um, this, the two halves of her was, it was, it was very interesting um, character. Um, let's see what we got. Congratulations on your great success. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Let's see if I missed any questions over here. I don't think I missed any questions. Okay, let's try. Let's see. We've done three questions. I'll do two more and then I'll taste another. Thing. Yes, and Jekyll and Hyde. Definitely Jekyll and Hyde. It's got like a. It's got like the good and the bad. Um, another will be kind of like um, like Dexter. I haven't watched all of Dexter, like the show, but how he's one person by day and one person by night. That kind of thing. A lot of superheroes because they have two, you know, personalities or two, not two personalities, but two. Um, I can't even think of the word right now. Two personas, not personality is completely different. Um, All right. Ellie from the Ellie effect. Oh, my gosh. Ellie. I love her. I really wish I could I had her skills. Oh, my gosh. She's so great. Um, She asked, why are you so beautiful? Well. And I don't know how to answer that because I'm bad at compliments, but thank you. Um, and then she said, also your favorite series or book would be um, my favorite standalone currently is um, this is really hard because forever it's been um, Kurt Vonnegut Slaughterhouse Five, um, but it's it's kind of moved a little bit onto unki an unkindness of magicians. Um, but my favorite series is probably currently the um where is it the darker shade of magic series yes can you give a shout out to my friends nope not gonna say that we're gonna go ahead and block you because you're dumb and you need to go away dun, 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 dun. yeah that is inappropriate we're gonna remove you. Cool. Okay. Um, next one. Okay. Next band or group would probably be right now. Nirvana has kind of been my musical obsession. Um, and my favorite character would probably be, um, Delilah Bard from the darker shade of magic's trilogy. So yes. Okay. Now I'm going to, I got one more question and then I'll try another thing of moonshine. Okay. The next one is Sarah from Novel Serendipity, and she is awesome. You had a troll to put porn on yours. Ugh. Why? 
I mean, like, was it good porn? I mean, don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Okay. Um, that's just gross. Why would they do that? Anyway, Sarah, this is the question from Sarah from Novel Serendipity. She's an amazing person. <laughs> and I absolutely, absolutely love her. Um, she asked, what's my favorite cookie? I know, Lee. I'm sorry. And that's terrible. That's really terrible. Okay. What's your favorite cookie? I would say those, like, pirouin, like, the, the, like, what are, like, the tubular cookies? <laughs> They're, um... I don't know how to, like, the chocolate hazelnut version of those. It's, like, the wafer cookie thing, straw things. I like those. Um, what book are you most looking forward to in 2019? I can't remember the name of this book, but it's um, the book that V.E. Schwab had um, it, it had stopped being in print, and then she's putting it back out. Um, I can't remember what, I, th I think it has the word witch in it, but I can't remember what the actual title of the book was right now. Um, but that one, I'm really excited about that one. Um, how do you time manage booktube and life? I don't very well, actually. I really don't. Uh, give me my sock. Give me my dog just stole my sock and carried it away. Um, but yeah, I would, I would, I would say I don't really manage booktube and life very well. I just try to do work when I'm at work and when I get home. If I have time, I try to do it. But um, I'm really bad at balancing. So yeah, no. If I figure it out, I'll let you know, Cindy. Hello. It's good to see you, Leisure Weeds. Um, stop scratching right next to my table. You're making things make noises. Okay, so if I fuss at my dog occasionally, she's like right here scratching and doing things that are noisy. My favorite holiday is Christmas. Um, that's a question on here as well. I love Christmas. Christmas is great. I cry at Christmas commercials and Christmas movies, and I love Christmas. Um, Jackie is so popular too. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> the Near Witch. Yes. That's what it's called. The near witch. Okay. 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 Um, oh gosh, Rachel, I'm trying to, I'll get to your thing. Um, let's see if I don't get to it next, I will, I will just go ahead and answer it. Um, my favorite childhood book and TV show. My favorite childhood book was, was the Alex Ryder series by Anthony Horowitz. My favorite childhood TV show was Liberty's kids. It was like on whatever the educational non cable television channel that everybody had that didn't have cable. Um, but it was, it was definitely Liberty's kids. It was like a patriotic cartoon. I don't know. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, a memory in your life that's been impactful to you that you'd be comfortable sharing. Um, I'd probably say, um, it's really hard, but I'd probably say my honeymoon because we went to Ireland and we went to Norway, but my, the best part of the entire thing was, Besides being married. That was cool. That's cool, too. But, like, the best part of the honeymoon was, like, we were dog sledding um, in Norway between all the snow-covered, like, Alps. And we were under the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. And it was just, it was such a cool, it was such a cool experience. Because I'm, like, here driving this freaking dog sled. And, like, you're supposed to keep one foot on the brake the whole time. And I totally didn't do that. I was, like, hanging off and, you know, enjoying all the fun times. And it, it really does. Sometimes I'm wondering, like, if it was it was real, if it was a dream. Because <laughs> it was just so gorgeous. And, like, I would kept looking up. And it was just, like, the northern lights. And if you look around, it's just, like, snow-capped mountains all over the place. And it was really, really, really awesome. Um, I'm going to answer some of the questions in the chat real quick. And then we'll get to the next moonshine thingy. Let's see. Favorite mythical pet. Rachel, I'm going to go ahead and answer that just in case you have to go because I do have your question in here. But I'm just going to go ahead and answer that. So I think my favorite mythical pet or animal, I guess, I don't know, um, would be a Thestral from Harry Potter. Because I think the sort of um, mythology behind them is kind of cool. You know how you can't see them unless you've seen death. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, and that was also my Patronus when I took the quiz on. Pottermore, it was a festival, so that would be my favorite pet. So I wanted to answer that before you had to go. <laughs> All right. Um, and then let's see if there's any other questions here. Favorite Christmas memory. Um I have a hard time remembering a lot of holidays. Um it might it might be the year I don't have a fuck uh pop Funko of a festival. No, I don't. Um, I think my favorite Christmas memory is the year that my mom like flipped off the whole family, um, including my little great grandmother. And she's like over here. My mom's like flipping everybody off because she got mad about something. Um, we all joke about it now, but yeah, that was 
probably one of my favorite Christmas memories just because it was really funny. Um, so yeah, that was my favorite Christmas memory. <laughs> okay, so the next moonshine, I just grabbed, I want to save that one because that one I'm excited about, is going to be Vanilla Bean. So um, this should be very interesting. Uh, let's see. Eh. I have to smell it first. I don't know. Okay, so this one is definitely a little better. It still has the, like, taste of just that really strong, like, rubbing alcohol taste. Um, but it also kind of tastes like a, um, like a middle school lip gloss. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Like a middle school lip gloss, the one that, like, tastes like cake or smells like cake. You're not supposed to taste them. I don't eat lip gloss. Um, but that's what it tastes like, I think. I like that one. Okay, that one's okay. Burns my nose a little. It's fine. All right, next question. Let's see. Gotta love the taste of rubbing alcohol. Yep. Uh, so this one's from Min Kobayashi. She's so cool. Okay, she's like one of, she was one of my, I guess, like first really supportive uh, people on BookTube. She gave me one of my first shout outs and it made me really happy. Um, and I'm really glad that I'm still her friend. So she asked, what was the weirdest response to someone finding you do BookTube? So... No one in real life has found my book tube except for the people that I've given it to. Um, with the exception of my bandmates. <sighs> because I linked like I, I, I said some, in my descriptions, I say that, you know, my intro and outro music are by my band and I put serotonin and I put like a link to them. Um, and I think they found me when they were searching for it or something. Night, Rachel. Uh, I think they found me when they were searching for it. And so they found my videos. And I got like a random text from one of them saying, oh, you do book videos? I really like this, the one where you sing your titles. And, and I was like, crap. But I'm just glad it's not like my family members. I don't want them to find it. So at least not like most of my family. There's a couple of family members that would be fine. But yeah. Um, which two books would you like to cross over? Ooh, I wish I'd thought about this one prior to now because that's hard. Let's see. I think I would like to cross over Scythe and Vicious. So Scythe by Neil Schusterman, uh, if you know the, the, the whole plot, the earth is advanced to a point where like they, people don't really die. Um, but if they do die, they can be kind of revived and things like that because of science, unless they are killed by fire or they're killed by these people called sides, which are um, given the responsibility of killing people basically um, to control the population. Um, and then vicious people acquire superhero or supernatural abilities when they um, have a near death experience. So it'd be interesting to kind of cross those two over and have the people that do like splat is what they say inside. They, you know, they die in some way or another. Um, they acquire super supernatural abilities when they revive. Um, Cause I feel like everyone will be trying to do it inside. I don't know. Those are just two that are right there. So I guess I just kind of picked them. Um, and then what is your favorite fictional animal? I kind of already answered that one with a Thestral. Um, so I'm going to keep that one. But if I had to pick another one, I would probably, yes, it'd be a great book. Write it. You're an amazing writer. You just do, you just take it, take it and write it. Um, I think my favorite fiction anim fictional animal is actually in one of my work in progresses, and it's based off of a wealth mythology. So, um, yes, I don't really want to spoil it, but it's 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 kind of based on the the wild hunt, but a little bit different. So I'm not going to give a lot of details because it's in my head still. Um, you already have comp tiles. That's true. That is true. So it could be like the vicious scythe. Is that what you mean? I think. <laughs> All right. Um, next. Um, this is another one from Sarah because she's awesome and supportive and gave me a million questions. Um, she asked, Coke or Pepsi? I would say Coke. If you say Pepsi, I'm so sorry that you're so wrong. Um, how did you name your dog? My dog's name is Solvi. Um, S-O with like a line and then L-V-I. Um Comp titles. When you query, usually you say what other books your book is like. Oh, okay. I understand. I understand. Um, so I would, yeah. 
Uh, my dog's name is Solvi, though, and I named her after we came back from our honeymoon um, in Norway. We gave we were like looking at Norwegian names, and we so we gave her just one that we thought was cool. Solvi actually means Sol means like sun, and then V is like life. So we gave her that name, and she's a big white fluffy dog, and then she's very bright in our life. So it fit. Um, what's a genre that you either don't read at all or don't read much of? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't read a romance. I just don't have an interest in it. I don't think there's anything wrong with romance and who people that crap on romance readers and writers are terrible, but, um, I don't have any interest in romance. So I will say that, um, Coke is better, especially since Diet Pepsi switched to non-aspartame for sweetener. Their new sweetener tastes nasty and has an aftertaste. Ugh. I just can't. I can't do Pepsi very much. I really just don't like it. I don't like any diet drinks, to be honest, but especially Pepsi. Pepsi gives me, like, really bad um, acid reflux, too, and I don't like that. Um, what's a goal you'd like to set for yourself in real life and in book two for 2019? Uh, for book two, my goal for 2019 is I really want to grow um, the Green Ribbon Book Club green ribbon book club that I, um, run on Twitter slash booktube. And I would love to grow it more and kind of get more involved with it, have some cool events with it, maybe do something where we can donate to, um, NAMI, which is the national Alliance for mental illness, um, and things like that. Some do some more like collaborative, collaborative things and get more people, get more book recommendations for the book club. Um, and then in real life, I think my goal for 2019 is I want to continue learning, um, American sign language because I've, I've learned a good bit this year, um, to go on top of what I kind of already knew. And then I'm trying to keep learning and I would like to become closer to fluent. I don't think I'm going to become fluent in a year, <laughs> but I would like to become closer to that and get to know it better. So I'm always here to help with the Green Room Book Club. Thank you, Wolfie. You're awesome. You're really awesome. Um, I think that was just two. I think I have dog fur in my mouth. There's dog fur everywhere. Um, next question is Scott from Book Invasion. Um, he just made a new book to newbie tag, by the way, and everyone should check it out. Um, second chances are for everybody. Um, what was the first pop slash rock song that you mastered on drums? So here's the thing. I'm a percussionist. So I play a lot of percussion instruments. My main one was marimba which is like a giant xylophone. I also play a lot of hand drums. Um, I can play simple things on drum set, but I haven't mastered anything on drum set. So there's not really any that I would say. Um, I've mastered something on the djembe, <laughs> but that was called, um, what was that song called? Bon Sayaba. It's a Swahili like praise song. So we sang and I drummed it. And so it was cool. Um, but yes, the marimba is my favorite. I, I played it from middle school, so like seventh grade-ish, all the way through high school, all the way through college, um, which is really sad, though, when you when you play an instrument like that, because you can't own it. You can own it, but it, it costs very, it costs a lot, so um, I haven't got to play my favorite instrument since I graduated college, so that was 2014-ish, uh, so it's been like four years since I played my instrument, and that's really sad. Um, so that's something that I've, I'm always constantly working towards, maybe one day being able to afford my own marimba so I can still play it, things like that. Um, next question is, if you could create a rock supergroup with fictional characters, who would they be and why? Uh, and this one, I'm just going to assume that these characters know how to play instruments, even if they don't. The first one, of course, is Scott Pilgrim, because he does play bass, and I know he plays bass. Um, the others will be... Um, let's go with Luke Skywalker on drums. I feel like he can use his force powers for cool things. Um, and let's see, I need another guitar cause I'm going to be singing. Just saying. Um, let's see. We'll say Victor Vale from Vicious. We'll put him on the keys and he's also going to help me co-write songs cause he's broody and stuff. I feel like he'd be good at writing songs. So, um, let's try another moonshine. Um, I think the next one is going to be Peach. Imagine dropping your drumstick and just using the force to summon it back without missing. <laughs> that would be, it'd come in, like, it would so come in handy. I literally hit myself in the face with drumsticks and mallets before, so I feel like the force would definitely help that. Um, so we have, let's see, Peach. Peach, yes, okay. <laughs> let's see. Okay, so, first of all, 
I don't like peach all that much, peach flavored things. Um, the last time I had a peach flavored alcohol, Victor would compose lyrics by grabbing books and blacking out words until their rhymes. Exactly, exactly. I, he would do blackout poetry and we'd just make it into songs. And I've already done that at work. I've done that at work before because I'm a music therapist. So <laughs> I've done these things. Um, and we do blackout poetry all the time. So I'm just, I'm just kind of putting off tasting this. Um, the last peach alcohol flavored alcohol I've had was we went to this drag club a couple weeks ago and there was some shot that had, that had peach flavoring it. So, mm. okay. So this one's better. It's getting there. Um, it doesn't really taste very, well, taste very peachy. I'm having a hard time with my words now that I've had a couple of sips of this. I'm very like lightweight, not physically lightweight, but drinking. I am very lightweight. Um, so I think this is a little bit better than, yeah, sorry, Leah. I think it's a little bit better than vanilla bean. Um, it's a little smoother. Like it feels like rubbing alcohol now, but it doesn't taste like rubbing alcohol anymore. Um, it kind of, when you smell it, it kind of smells like apple juice, but unfortunately it's not. Hopefully apple pie will be closer to apple juice because that's my jam. All right. Another one from the gorgeous mug. Let's see what we have. We have... Rachel Marie, I already answered. I already answered one of her questions before she left. Um, but she also asked my biggest pet peeve. I don't like people who um, judge other people and put labels on them. Um, uh, yeah, I don't like any derogatory comments towards anyone based on any single trait that they have. Um, like, at, for example, at work, I've had somebody talk about that the patients, like, oh, probably they can't read anyway. Like, there's a library at work and they said, these people can't even probably can't read anyway. And I was just like, okay, mental illness doesn't have anything to do with your intelligence. And so that irritated me. Um, people that make assumptions about people based on their skin color, based on their schooling, based on any single trait annoys me. But like you can judge people based on their actions. And even then there's probably more to the story. Yeah, no, it was, it was complete garbage. I almost went off. Yes. And this, these are people that work with them. And that was, it was just a lot. Um, I've also had someone say to someone, to a patient that had the same diagnosis I have, um, they asked her, you know, like what she do for a living. And she said that she babysits occasionally. And then the staff member after the patient left said, well, I wouldn't trust her with my kids. And I was just like, what, what? what? Like it just, it didn't, things like that just irritate the mess out of me. People making assumptions of people on anybody, but of course, mental illness is something that's closer to me. So that's going to be, I'm going to be more sensitive about that. Yeah. It was very disappointing. I did confront the person about it in their office later after I've cooled off. <laughs> I cooled off and then I confronted them and they were like, all right, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. They haven't done anything similar to that since then. So I'm hoping that our conversation helped yeah, I don't know. I feel like they say it because they think, oh, I can be, you know, funny in this conversation and no one's getting hurt here. Um, I think that's what there's come what that's coming from. Good, you cooling off first. That takes a lot of self-control. Yeah, and yeah, there is a lot of there is a lot of lack lack of empathy there. So but for me, I know if I talk when I'm angry, I, nothing good is gonna come of it. So I definitely took a break, practiced what I was gonna say, and then I went and talked to them. And also this person was in a place of power above me. So it was a lot scarier to confront them. And I hadn't been there all that long when that happened. But I straight up was like that was disrespectful. It was unprofessional. It was prompted by nothing. You don't even know this person and you're saying these things about them. And I straight up was like, as someone who has mental illness, you hear things like this a lot, and it's just incredibly hurtful. Um, and I was just hope in the future, you'd think a little bit more before you say something like that. And it actually, I feel like it was a good conversation because I used assertive skills. I wasn't, I wasn't like passive aggressive, and I wasn't straight up like, you said this, how dare you? You know, like I wasn't attacking them either. I, I did it respectfully. And I think that's the best way to communicate an issue with someone. Um, in a way that they're going to listen to what you have to say and not just the anger behind it. So um, it's gross how common it is. It is. It is really gross how common that is. So off my pedestal. Next, next question. Um, Amy from Blonde and Bookish. Um, let's see. I'm in a middle similar situation. 
Yes, you. It's important to like take a break, and when you uh, confront it again, you don't have to wait. Don't wait too long, but like when you do confront it again, making sure you're in a place where you can, um, you can, you know, communicate what you need to communicate. And thank you, Cynthia. I thought I did pretty good with it. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, this is from Amy at, with Blonde and Bookish. She does some really cool bookish news videos, where she just talks about like books that are coming out. It's not really like booktube news. It's book like book like the field sort of news, like books that are coming out, covers that have been announced, things like that. It's really cool. Um, she said favorites of the year so far. And mine would be Nod by Adrian Barnes, which I'm really sad because I found out he passed away in January. Um, and that's the only book that he has. And of course it's much sadder for his family, but it's just, it's unfortunate that only one of his books was able to make it into the world. Um, publishing news. Yes, Leah, that's what I was trying to say. Um, the other favorite would definitely be, um, well, two other favorites. Vicious and um, An Unkindness of Magician by Cat Howard. Those are my three favorites. And so two of those are adult science fiction. One of those is adult fantasy, like high, high urban, urban fantasy. Um, they're all really good. Um, yes, it's so good, Cindy. Please read it. I mean, like not to be dramatic, as I've said before, like not to be dramatic about it, but I would definitely cut off my leg for that, for that book. It was amazing. Um, favorite characters of all time. This one's really hard because I forget things. Um, yikes. Okay, so I love Siamara and let's see. Oh, let me answer this so the food can be delivered here. Let's see. Um, there we go. Okay, sorry. We had a gate thing and the food's being delivered. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Siamara from the Poet X is one of my favorite characters. Um, what else? Delilah Bard from an, um, Gathering of Shadows, Conjuring of Light, Darker Shade of Magic. My brain is going. Um, Darth Zana from Star Wars. Those are probably my three favorites currently. Yes, Lila Bard is my jam. God, I love her. And yes, it, it was a little high praise for um, kind of some magicians. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, from Victoria Palace Theater, London, where I'm actually exhausted from the show tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're exhausted tonight. Um, let's see. I think a lot of people don't like her because they feel like she's, um, she's like, mm, what is it? Not like other girls trope. But I think it's more like she doesn't entirely identify like with a lot of the gender norms for girls. And I think that the expectation makes her angry. Either that or I'm totally projecting my own things onto her. But, like, that's kind of, like, how I, where I come from it, with it. Um, I think that's the deal with Delilah. But I absolutely love her. I just do. I just do. All right. Um, Alana from the Awkward Book Nerd. Oh, my gosh. She's so sweet. I love her so much. Okay. She said, if you could have any author write your life story, who would you choose? Um, let's see. Tomorrow. Yes. Oh, Chris. Hey, Chris is my friend that was in my um vlog, by the way. He's great. She's abrasive in personality at times. Yeah, you're right. She is a little bit abrasive at times. Um, I agree with that. Not like other girl trip is constantly throwing other girls under the bus. And I don't remember Lila doing that. I agree. I don't think she threw other girls under the bus. She did say like she would say something like this is the expectation. And I didn't do that. Um, but I don't think she ever threw anybody under the bus. You're right. Um, I forgot what I was saying oh um if i could have any author write my life story who would i choose um i think that's really hard i have a lot of really uh, authors i really really like um i think i read a book called wild awake by hillary t smith and it was about a girl that had bipolar disorder um and just the way that she wrote was very humorous but also serious and i think that would probably be who i'd want to write my story just because she has experience with my type i guess um let's see i think lila would not would think about it in, in passing, but I interpret it as coming out of insecurity. I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, let's see. If you could be roommates with any character, who would you choose? Not Lila, because I feel like she'd steal my stuff. Um, oh, any character ever? If it was any character ever, I'd probably have to go with King Midas. <laughs> He's a character. He counts. He'll make everything gold and I'll be rich. Um, let's see. If you could be cast in any book to movie adaptation, what, which would you choose? Well, ooh, so I don't, uh, I don't know. That's really hard. Um, keep him away from your dog. Who? 
Minus, yes, you're right. I should keep him away from my dog. You're absolutely right. Be Victor's roommate and he'll obsess over you and try to outdo your near-death attempts. That is true. That is true, but I'm scared that he would also, like, end up offing me. So, I don't trust him. He scares me. But, um, let's see. If I had to um, be cast in a book to movie adaptation. Um, this is really hard because I don't really see myself in a lot of, in a lot of books. Um... I'm just like looking around at my shelves trying to see if I can think of something. Um, I'd have to go with an unkindness of magicians because I loved, <laughs> I loved that um, book just so much. And I feel like the main, like there's a lot of characters and I feel like the main um, sort of magician in that book had just so much, I don't know. They had so much darkness to them, but also so much like power and confidence. And I loved that. It was really cool. New game, take a shot every time you recommend an unkind of submission. <laughs> You're right. What flavor should I do? Speaking of, I have to taste up. Well, I'm going to taste apple pie. We'll take, we'll taste blackberry and I'll do it. I'll do it. Every time I think of, I mentioned unkind of submission, we'll take a shot <laughs> from the, it won't be a full shot because that would be like the whole moonshine. And this stuff is really hard. Um, I'm going to be picturing this main character as you the whole time I read an unkind of submission. Awesome. Her name is Sydney. It's me. Okay. So this is, Blackberry, which I don't even know what blackberries taste like. Um, okay, so this one tastes. Hmm. This one tastes like okay. If you took the peach moonshine and you like stirred it with a knife that had been spreading jam, that's what it tasted like. Like, it's not, like, actually tastes like jam, but it tastes like it has had some sort of secondary jam situation experience, and that's what it, yeah. It is good. It actually is good. We'll put this one over here for every time I recommend an unkindness of magicians. All right. Next question. I think that was all the ones on that one. It was. Okay. Bam. Okay. Abby McManigan from Abby Mac Reads. Um... Also, like, I was watching her videos the other day, and she does, like, a green screen behind her, and she's been changing the library behind her each time. One of them was Trinity College Library, which is in Dublin. Um, I don't remember what the other one was. It was really shiny, though. She does, like, a different library, which is, if you like library porn, there's, there you go. Um, Cindy loves Blackberry. Or, no, Min Kobayashi loves Blackberry. And hello! I'm so glad you made it. Um, what book character do you find the most annoying ever? Also, I spelled it find as if you got fined for something like breaking the law, but find. So what book character do you find the most annoying ever? Um, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I'm going to say Juliet from Shatter Me. Sorry, but like I just don't. I really just don't like her. Um. Yeah, I, I feel bad like saying I don't like her because a lot of people really like Shatter Me, but she just, I can't, I can't deal with her, her BS. She's just so, so like whiny and stuck in her, and so it's like some things that I feel like she should react to, she doesn't, but then other things she'll react super dramatically to, and I just, I can't, I can't, yes, Chris, you're absolutely right, they should be fine for being so annoying, I 100% agree. All right. Um, the next question is from Nathaniel at a council of geeks, um, which who they do a lot of like fandom videos on their page and stuff. It's really cool. Um, bye, Annalisa. Thank you so much for coming. Oh my gosh, you're going to see Bohemian Rhapsody. That's so cool. I would love to hear you know how you felt about it because I still I still need to go see it. Um, so Nathaniel from Council of Geeks said, "What character do you feel is the most frequently slash wildly misinterpreted slash misunderstood?" Ooh, um, I'm gonna say, I actually don't know. Let's see. Um, this is really hard. I would maybe say like Snape in Harry Potter. And I'm not saying he's misunderstood. Like, oh, it's so poor him. He's misunderstood. But I feel like a lot of people feel like he's like a super like wow it's so romantic that he still you know loves lily or whatever but he's honestly a total jerk like who treats a child like that in their classes when you say that you love their mother like he's a jerk i don't i don't i don't 
I'm not here for his excuses. So I'd say he's misinterpreted slash misunderstood. Um, what book have you read and you thought it would have been better as something else, like a TV show, manga, 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 video game, etc.? Hmm. Let's see. So most of the things that I'm, I, I can't really, that's hard. Cause a lot of things I'm like, Oh, I wish this was a book, but like to think that something should be not a book and something else is really hard for me. I kind of feel like the Illuminate trilogy. I've only read the first one. Um, cause I thought I'd like it cause I really liked the Themis files trilogy. Um, which is like an adult version, I guess rather than the YA version. Um, but the Illuminate trilogy, I feel like I would have liked it even more as a graphic novel because it was so graphic already. I just feel like it would be really cool as a graphic novel. So, yeah, that one. Next. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Kayla from Scoob Dairy. I hope you're saying your your name right. Scoob Dairy, I think. You're, she's brand new. She just, like, started recently. She has her, I think her booktube newbie tag is the only video she has up currently. So, she, you should definitely check her out. But this is how her thing is spelled, her username. So, you should totally check her out and give her some support. Um, she said, how long have you known ASL, American Sign Language, um, and how did you get introduced to it? Um... I've been interested in American Sign Language since I was very little. Like, every time I'd go to the library with my mom, I'd have my whole stack of books, and I'd always have some sort of ASL dictionary in there because I just – I loved – I don't know. I don't know if it's because I – I'm a visual person sometimes. I'm not always a visual person, but also no one could understand me when I talk because I mumble a lot, and I talk very quickly. And I and so I was like, maybe if I just sign to people, they'd understand what I'm saying. Um and then um, I was always interested in it. And then in college, it was offered as a foreign language credit. And my college is really close to the South Carolina School for the Deaf and the Blind. And so there's a pretty big deaf community. Um, it was because you were bending the time space continuum. You're absolutely right, Leah. And they just don't understand my um, abilities there. And so I did. I got more into sign language because um, in Spartanburg, which is where my college was, there's a really big deaf community and I got really into it and um, I learned a lot about it and it learned how beautiful of a language it was. I loved how it could be almost like you were dancing when you're signing. And I thought it was really cool. Um, and I'm not fluent by any means. Um, I took, I learned a little bit growing up and then I took two semesters in college and I've been learning on my own since then. So I'm not fluent though. I wish I was. I'm going to keep working on it. Um, bookish babbles. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Um, the eggnog is gone. That's very sad. Oh no. Oh no. I'm very sorry that you, you drank too much eggnog. I hope you get something else. Try some moonshine. It's not bad. And that was the blackberry. Okay. Um, question. Avery from Avery loves books. Oh, Avery. Okay. So Avery's adorable. She has like this Texas like accent and it's, it's just really cute. Um, what's a book series you are dying to read at the moment? Uh, I've started most of the book series that I haven't read. Um, maybe. I'm, okay. So I'm going to say, I think, it, well, okay. So one that my son's bothering me about, husband has been bothering me about for a while. I can't speak is, um, the Malazan book of the fallen series. I think that's the right title. Yes. Um, he talks about it all the time and it's just really cool. So I'm going to start Malazan in January and start reading the, um, the series. Hey, Alyssa. It's nice to see you. Um, so, um, it'd be that series, the Malazan book of the fallen series. Um, yeah, I'm dying to read it though. Cause I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So I'm going to go ahead and try the apple pie moonshine. I had it with cookies, so I'm comatose. Oh, no. Someone go save. Happy booktuber. Happy booktuber down. Okay, so apple pie. This is the one I've been most excited for because I've had apple pie moonshine before, and it was the best thing ever. And it smells like apple juice, as it should, because apple juice is great. Hmm. It tastes kind of like the peach one, but it has like, it's like if you took the peach one and like sneezed into some cinnamon, like beside it and like a fleck of cinnamon got in it. That's what it tastes like. Yes, we'll keep it. Okay. That one's my favorite though so far. All right. Question from Binta from a positive writer. Um, Binta is so funny. 
Um, but yeah, Fenta is like so bright and hyper and I absolutely love all of his videos. Favorite thing about your channel, favorite video of yours, a book you consider. Okay, so there's three questions on this. Sneezed some cinnamon beside it. That is what I said, actually, Cindy. Someone sneezed into some cinnamon beside it. Yep. Um, let's see. Favorite thing about my channel is probably that I have a good mix of um, like mental health into my things. I like that I can talk about that in my videos and stuff like that. And I love that I have a pretty wide array of books that I discuss, like YA and adult and new adult, and middle grade, graphic novels, nonfiction occasionally. And I want to get more nonfiction, but um into my channel but have been reading a lot of it lately favorite video of yours it's really hard to choose a favorite video because every video i make i'm like obsessed with it at that time and then I'm obsessed with the next one i'm obsessed with the next one um but i really like my um average ned's video it kind of was inspired by ned from a darker shade of magic trilogy um and i just talked about a lot of average characters that i really really like so yes and thank you, Min. That's, that, that makes me really happy. Thank you. Um, let's see. A book you consider is your brand. Um, so the book that I consider my brand would be a, An Unkindness of Magicians because I love that it's like urban fantasy and it's like, I like standalones. It's the, it has like all this cool narrative on... <laughs> It has all this cool narrative on, um, like, social change and stuff like that. And my husband's motioning at me to, yeah. Oh, no. I drank, like, half of this little. I'm not drinking the whole thing for a shot because it's moonshine. And the proof is, like, 30% alcohol. So, that was great. But, yes. Dark, oh, I almost said Darker Shade of Magicians. It's <laughs> Unkind of Some Magicians. Okay. Your brand, your brand is Vampire Academy Trash YA. <laughs> yes, I love it. Okay. Um, I have three more questions. Before I do that, um, I mentioned that I might grant someone's bookish wish during this live show. Darker Shade of Magician. <laughs> That's the next crossover. Um, I mentioned that I might do a bookish, grant a bookish wish while I'm in here. So this particular question, you do have to have like an Amazon wish list for it so I can go there and do it. Um, so anyone that has an Amazon wish list where I can find it or that can send it to me can try this. But to, to, for me to grant your bookish wish, I want to see who can guess. Um, let's see. I have wrote it down. Who can guess how many books are in my library? And whoever is the closest to how many books are in my library, I'm going to grant one of your bookish wishes. Yes. So I'll give you a little bit of time to like make some guesses and I'll answer a couple more questions. And then I'll, I'll get in touch with you afterwards to see if you can um, give me your wish list. Yes. Okay. So the next question is Courtney from Courtney. Wait, Courtney from Court the Reader. I can't read. Um, she asked, my favorite color. My favorite color is black. I love black. What is your favorite magic system from any book? So, my favorite magic system <sighs> would have to be the uh, magic system in an unkindness of magicians. <laughs> because there's, like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> because there's, like, they pull from shadows and they like, I'm going to die tonight, Leah. I know. And I'll drink it after I'm done. Um, cause they, they like pull their magic from like the shadows. They have like, they can pull it from other people and it's a very dark. Also, if you're going to read that book, beware, there's some like, like self harm kind of, but it's like ritual self harm. Um, have I watched the magicians like the show? Yes. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Um, and yes, <laughs> Black is the best color to have as a favorite color. And I have watched The Magicians. I read the book too, the first one of the trilogy, and I didn't like the book so much, but I liked the show. So um, since I did recommend Unkindness of Magicians, and it's so great. Hmm. The serial position effect is doing you in. What does that mean? Serial position. I'm really, I'm tired. What does that mean? Tell me what that means. You're too smart. 
explain this to me. It's like you remember the most recent thing that you read. Yes, and it's a problem because I, I mean, I actually read that like in earlier this year. Like that was one of the first books I've like I think I read when I started book two. Is it? No, no, it was it was it was a couple months ago. But yeah, it's just it's so good. It's just so good. Other magic systems that I like are um, the magicians, even though I don't like the author's writing style. Um, he describes women weird. It's like. Every time a woman, a woman walks in, he has to describe something sexual about her, like her jawline. And it's like his waitress taking his order and he has to like, it's it, like, it's annoying. Oh yes. I know what you're talking about. The, um, the serial position, because we learned about that in one of my psych classes. I know what you're talking about now. I'm just tired and been drinking mention. Um, this is why I can't read male authors a lot of the times because they pull this shit. Yes, I totally agree. This it's so often, like I, I saw a post one time and it was like, every male author, how he describes a woman. And it said that she, <laughs> what did it say? It said the woman, um, walked boobily down the stairs and titted downwards. And it was just like all these boob words. And it's like, I don't understand why they have to describe everything sexually. Yeah. What is up with the jaw lines? Yeah. I also walk boobily down the stairs. Same. Like it's hard not to walk boobily down the stairs. Things bounce. Gravity exists. Um, but yeah, no. So the magicians has a really cool magic system though, especially, I would say, I honestly like the show better though. It's cool. All right. Next question. And this is from Karen from Karen Chronicles. Um, if you haven't seen, thank you so much. I, re I appreciate you. You're so sweet. Um, if you haven't seen Karen Chronicles, her, um, YouTube channel, um, She's awesome. She's been doing a lot of college vlogs. She goes to the same college that I graduated from. So I love her. Um, she asked, what book have you been meaning to read but always put off? Um, currently, most of them. Um, American Gods, though. I've gotten through parts of it, like, like a good chunk of it, maybe like a third or a little bit more than that, almost half um, of American Gods. And I just haven't finished it because I've been really distracted lately and have a hard time kind of just sticking to reading. Um but I will say, I would say probably American Gods. Um, if you were an animal, what animal would you be based on personality? And this one, I would definitely have to say red pandas. If you've ever seen a red panda video, they're spazzes and they're clumsy and they're adorable. And I'm two of three of those things. And I love them. So next one. Ooh, oh, Leah. Okay. So I, I just like didn't read that right. Okay. Leah from <laughs> Where in the World is Leah Jane? Um, Let's see. She's awesome, by the way. If you haven't if you haven't checked out Leah, she's amazing. And also, her writing is gorgeous. I just wanted to share that. She said, what piece of music that you've written is your... Wait. What piece of music that you've written is your current favorite? Okay. Um, no, you're awesome. Okay. I would have to say... Let's see. I haven't written a lot since um, college. I did have a um, music composition degree, like, double major for, like, a year and then I dropped it. Um, but I wrote a piece where we had to set like, we had to set a poem to music and we talked about, no, you're awesome, Cindy. We had to talk about um, like do text painting. So we had to basically the words when they did a certain thing, we had to somehow illustrate the words with the music. And there was one song and I can't remember the name of it, but it was like about like a jester or something. And I wrote it for voice and marimba. And it just, it was really cool because me and my um, friend who was a vocal major performed it. And it was, it was a really cool piece. Um, <laughs> I also wrote a piece called Cheshire Cat for Marimba. And it was halfway through, it just like mirrors itself. And that was, that was a really cool one. Yay, she's back. <laughs> Let's see. They're all like little raccoons, but aren't, yes, they're actually in the same family as raccoons. They're not in the same family as bear, um, pandas. They're actually in the raccoon family. Um, I'm so glad you're back. Um, Sarah's back. Well, she's Sarah's on her break, but yay, Sarah's here. Everybody's here. This is cool. Okay. Um, let's see. I've got one more question, and then we'll, yeah. Bailey's book. Oh, no. Bailey's book babble. Um, oh, yeah. She did Morgan Vegas mental health tech. Okay. Um, let's see. She asked, do I believe in mermaids? <laughs> what a great final question. Do I believe in mermaids? Um, I mean... I, I mean, I saw a walrus a couple weeks ago, and I feel like they were beautiful. 
And also, um, what's her name? I can't remember. Nick Stone. Me and my friend Chris, who was in here a minute ago, I think he's still here. We saw Nick Stone, the author, at an event recently, and she looked like a mermaid. So she's kind of made me believe in them. I don't believe in mermaids, but I believe in you. Thank you, Cindy. That's very inspiring. <laughs> uh, yes, I am the walrus. Goo 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 jube. Um, all right, so that's all the questions I have in my mug. So let me see who who sent a number here. Oh my gosh, yes, she is. <laughs> Chris is here. All right, so um, I asked y'all to guess how many books I have in my library, and are all the answers in? Does anybody else want to guess that has a, a bookish wish that I can grant? Let's see. Okay. <laughs> so, um, is anybody else going to guess? I'll give you like. 10 more seconds if you want to guess how many books are in my library, and then I'll answer them. We have 497. Chris, 312. Chris says wait, so I'll wait. Let's see. I'm Mean Girls the Limit Designs. <laughs> you win just for that comment. <laughs> all right, so I guess all the, um, I guess. <laughs> That's great. I think all the guesses are in. So our guesses are for how many books are in the library. Steven, you can listen to this because it's kind of funny. Um, 427, 513, 527, 537, 375, um, 497, 312. I love how random these are. <laughs> um, let me just look because I used a counter to count them earlier. So. The amount of books that I had in my library when I last counted is, drum roll, that was a terrible drum roll, I'm so ashamed. Um, let's see, yikes. So at last count, um, oh, do you wanna change your guess before I, before I say it? <laughs> I think so, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just, <laughs> Oh my gosh, the anticipation. Okay, before I, before I say what the answer is, I'm going to take one more sip of the apple pie because it's almost gone. Okay, so the answer is we have ugh, 1,082 books in our library. And that's not counting, like, the um, textbooks. So, <laughs> yeah, we have, like, 1,082 books. Because, yeah. It's a lot of books. I've been collecting for a while. My husband's also been collecting for a while. So we have a pretty substantial library. Um, it's the only thing that we really spend a lot of money on. So <laughs> we're not super, we're not like ashamed of it, but it is a lot. It is a good bit. Um, yeah, the ones behind me, that's like, I have three shelves that are like full shelves there and then three over there and a, sh a short one here and a short one there and a short one there and a tall one there and a tall one there. We have a bunch. Um, so I think who guessed the highest was Bookish Babbles? Yes. Bookish Babbles. You won. I believe. Yes. Okay. So you, you won. So I will message you on the Twitter after the live show and get like a link to your Amazon wish list or like something that you would like to get. And I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, does anyone have any other questions before we go? Because I'm sweating from the moonshine. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I've reached actual southerner status because I've had moonshine tonight. Um, any other questions before I go? At all. If not, that's also fine. Have you read Girl Made of Stars? Um, no, I almost thought I did. I read Star Girl by Jared Spinelli. That's different. Um, <laughs> Jerry Spinelli? One of those. I don't know. It was for a summer reading thing. But um, I have not read Girl Made of Stars yet. Thank you, Cindy. I'm so glad you got to come. Um, I've heard that I need to read Girl Made of Stars, so I will try it out. I will try it out soon. But I had to have had it on my list for a little bit. Do you have a funny story about Solvi that you'd like to share? Oh, it won't let you comment? Oh, no. I think that one came up. That's weird. Yeah, we should buddy read it. I totally agree. Um, I'll, I'll message you um, bookish babbles. Oh, it might be because you were like excitedly 
<laughs> Sometimes if people excitedly type it, it like comes up a million ones. Um, what was I answering? Oh, a funny story about Sylvie that I'd like to share. Um, let me think. She does a lot of goofy things. Um, I think one of my favorite things that she does is like if we're scratching your chest, if you stop, she'll like make weird noises at you. Like if you stop, she'll like just look at you like, excuse me, why did you stop? And then she'll be like, huh? <laughs> a little weird. I just made that sound on, on the internet. But yeah, no, weird noises like that. Um, also, there was one time we like put this little rope toy that we have like on our face like here. And she went like this. She went. And, like, made this really, like, surprised face. I hope no one screenshots that and makes it inappropriate. But, yes, <laughs> that. Um, we were too enthusiastic about your live show. Maybe. Maybe that's what's up. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Anybody else have any questions before I go? At all. If not, that's fine. Um, my next video, I'm hoping I can get it up sometime soon. It's It's very um, involved and I have to learn something on a guitar because I can't find a good backtrack for it. So I'm trying to learn it so I can create it. But the next video is going to be an interesting one, hopefully, and not terrible. We don't want to accidentally unkind of some magicians. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, no, I understand. Does that mean, is that, is that a verb now? Because I spammed you with an unkind of a magician? I'm excited for your Spice Girl clip. Yes, I have to get you that as well. I'm so, I've been so brain-wise, I just haven't, like, made things that I need to make. So I am going to get to that, and I'm going to, like, make my musical video that I'm going to put up at some point soon. It's a holiday-themed, so we'll see. Um, but thank every, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to message you, and let's see, make sure I get to your um, Amazon wish list thing and all. Um, Let's see. I also wanted to just thank everybody for following me and subscribing to me um, because I didn't realize that this would like actually get traction, this YouTube channel. Um, I'm trying really hard to like get to a thousand before the end of the year, but if it doesn't happen, you know, that's fine. Numbers aren't everything. A lot of this is kind of, a lot of this is just the community aspect and kind of getting to know everybody and getting to love everybody. You're all really awesome. Um, Thank you so much, everybody, and I love you all, too. So, um, y'all have a great evening, and, of course, if you're, you know, if you would like to see more of me, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, but I'm pretty sure you're all subscribed to me. So, uh, I'll see y'all later. Bye!